And we protested loud and long and we got paid to sit. Any results? Suppose. Yes. It is as far as me that an insurance policy can cover a housing order flooding without there being a second policy. The mistakes absolutely cost me that a housing order by two weeks is not covered under the standard homework policy. Every company in the so you're saying that it is covered automatically? It is covered. Flooding is yep. yep. Flooding. Now, you asked about exclusions. Flooding is defined as water that rises. Okay? If you had a hole in your roof or your gutters overflow and damaged your house or the stuff inside. Yeah. Any other exclusion? Revolution. Did I understand correctly that if uh, your house is on a hillside and the hillside gives way and you're unable to rebuild, that the insurance will not reimburse you the cost of your house? Uh, they will only repay you if you rebuild? I didn't say that. Okay. I misunderstood. Uh, in general, the policy does cover damage from landslides. So, uh, it's, uh, what about the cost? Of the land? Thank you. No. No, that's never <laughs> Okay, within the fire and natural disaster policy, I want to talk about contents. Most of the houses in Costa Rica are made of non combustible materials, brick and block. So even though it's a fire and natural disaster, Fire in, uh, is the uh, least of your rights. The houses are not going to bust. They're not going to burn. Okay. So what is your worry? Mostly landslides, quakes, and floods. Okay. Um, that, that, the yeah. main worry of most people is earthquakes. Now, uh, if an earthquake happens, in a house made of brick or block, if it's a nice earthquake, I love them, it's different business. Uh, if an earthquake happens, the houses may uh, get walls out of line, walls crack, burst pipes, etc. The damage is quite free. However, in wooden houses, I've been in wooden houses during the quakes, and the whole thing creaks. And the quake stops. Just like it was before, but nothing happens. So if you live in a wooden house, your main worry is fire and you should ensure contents. Because if the place catches fire, it's going to take over with it. If you live in a non-combustible house, 
Save a product, don't insure the contents because uh, a non combustible house can be severely damaging and break, and the stuff inside hardly anything happens to it. Okay? Your option, insurance is to keep you folks sleeping peacefully. But that's what I do and what I advise. Any naysayers? You're the expert. <laughs> Next chapter. Any more questions on home fire and natural disasters? Going, going, well. You can insure separately for earthquake, <coughs> fire, you can insure all those separately. It's, it's a package. Home fire and natural disasters. But you can get just the fire. All here. Yeah. <coughs> okay. That's what we have in here. Okay, theft. Uh, up to now, the only theft policy available is from INS. Don't buy it. The claim process is uh, so difficult that most people cannot get through the bureaucracy in order to get payment. Okay. The reason for this is that there has been a lot of fraud in regard to the claims on the theft policy. You can imagine what happens. Somebody has a theft policy and they get back from the movies on a Friday night and find that there's a, uh, a hole in the window and somebody's taking their TV. I said this wrong. I said this wrong. Excuse me. Back up. Somebody's TV goes wrong. So they break the window Throw the TV over the, over the cliff <laughs> and then call the insurance company and say, Oh, I read the movies on Friday night, someone stole my TV. Well, the insurance company doesn't buy it. And as there's no competition, they throw a barrage of red tape at you and you won't be able to get through it. So save your money, save the frustration, don't buy a theft policy. Uh, we hope this will change. That the new insurance company will go out and buy the families. But this morning, no. So, if you're going to build a house, make sure you have provisions for lights outside and uh, that sort of stuff. If you, uh, uh, should we say, uh, move into a used house, try not to get one on the top of the hill over there. That's Safety on your own, uh, should say responsibility, and don't rely on a theft policy for the moment. Yes? Different subject. If we can uh, try to stop in 15 minutes, I know the Edith Nina students have to leave. Okay. So if you guys have questions, let's uh, try to corner David after the presentation. If okay, I'll press that subject. Okay, good. Uh, the next Part of the uh, homeowner's policy is homeowner's liability. Now, it's important to realize that in Costa Rica, liability is downplayed. In other countries, if somebody goes to your house and they have an accident, uh, routinely they will sue or threaten to sue, and uh, you will go yelling to your insurance company and they will pay out or on the liability policy. Well, here that doesn't happen. Um, liability for a homeowner, it is an issue. Yeah. Uh, this is because the attitude of the judges. Um, and I can best illustrate this with an example. Something came out in a snow a few years ago. It seems that somebody was walking down the sidewalk in downtown San Jose, and he tripped in a hole in the sidewalk and fell and he did himself some damage and he sued the owner of the building, uh, the sidewalk was, for uh, his building costs. And what came out in the Nation was the report. And basically the judge said to the plaintiff, are you not aware that the sidewalks in San Jose are full of holes? <laughs> no. You better watch where you walk, mate. This is not 
not to say that businesses should not have liability. If you're running a restaurant or a hotel or something like that, you should have a liability policy. But it doesn't have to be for hundreds of thousands of dollars coverage because the awards that the judges give in Costa Rica are based on redress and they throw out uh, complaints for pain and suffering and anguish and uh, loss of companionship and all that stuff that happens in other countries is thrown out. Okay? So, uh, liability is not important. If you can't get a good night's sleep without a policy, buy a policy. It's the truth to keep you sleeping peacefully, but it will be a little. Any questions or are you in shock? <laughs> I know you won't have that. Okay. So, uh, uh, I have about maybe three quarters to an acre of coffee. Uh, I had a guy that was supposed to take care of it. I took, he went in a contract at my attorney. He said, no, you need to make sure that he's responsible for his workers' insurance. Because if not, he can come to me. They can come to me. If they're working in my coffee field and get hurt. So, okay. I did to touch on the workers' by the workers' compensation. Okay, um, what's next? Uh, workers' compensation, yes. Okay. Uh, if you are an employer, employers must, must buy two different coverages for their employees. One is CAH, Social Security, which covers sickness, etc., etc., etc. Okay. And uh, that is not strictly insurance. We don't deal with it. You have to deal with a CACA directly. And CACA uh, uh, is a payroll deduction, some of it, and some of it is paid for by the employer. The other type of insurance that employers must get for their employees is workers' compensation, which pays for work related accidents. Uh, it is still only INS that sells workers' compensation policy and uh, they don't pay out. What they do is, like the obligatory old insurance, they take care of the people that have an accident. Um, if a worker of yours has an accident and you don't have uh, the workers' compensation policy, you are responsible for the whatever happened in the accident. And what happens is that the person who has the accident will go repeatedly off to some hospital or civil social or Red Cross and they will get treated and then they're going to be asked to pay. And the, uh, if they don't have insurance, the uh, Red Cross or the CACA or whatever gave the treatment will say your boss has to pay and the boss pays out. Okay. The serious thing is, what if somebody becomes maimed and can't work for the rest of his days? If you don't have workers' compensation, you are going to have to pay for that workers' family forever. Okay? So you must have workers' compensation. The cost of workers' compensation depends on the type of business and the job that is being performed. Okay? Um, let's put it this way. Which is more at risk? A business that makes fireworks or, say, a forest. The firework business can get blown sky high and all the people who be working get cooked. So, because it's a firework business, they're going to have a higher threshold of uh, uh, premium than, say, the florist. Now, within the florist business, for example, who is more at risk? The secretary that stands behind the counter or sits behind the, uh, the desk, or the guard that's outside with his M16 waiting for somebody to hold up? Okay. 